We're going to go to the Bank of International Settlements. That's like the group of the world's central banks, right? This is the central bank of central banks, continuing their exploration into crypto and here to centralize finance. A pair of reports out today aren't exactly bullish on what DeFi can accomplish, and they say that they might not even eliminate the middlemen that crypto often wants to get rid of. So these are a pair of reports from BIS, which has been historically quite bearish on DeFi, but does suggest that their continued interest in understanding these technologies is at least pretty well established at this point. Uh, Jen, a few nuggets in this one. I'm going to throw it to you for your thoughts. BIS on DeFi, what are you thinking? BIS would say this, right? They would say DeFi is not good. We're an intermediary. We, we want to keep operating like we are. I think that the good part about this story is that we are talking about maybe some of the sticking points of DeFi. DeFi is so early. So there are problems, there are issues and pain points that we need to solve. I think though, if you juxtapose that against the traditional financial, in the uh, traditional finances that have for so long failed so many people, there are so many solutions in DeFi that just need to be worked on. And so when I read this, I think it's great that we're pointing out the pain points. What is upsetting about this report to me is that it calls for regulation to fix some of these pain points. And it says, you know, so many DeFi platforms, so many DeFi exchanges are actually centralized. I think if we regulate too soon, we're not giving these platforms enough space to actually achieve that de decentralization that we talk about, right? And Hester Peirce has brought this up when she talks about her regulatory sandbox. We need to allow platforms that are trying to achieve decentralization, the room and the space to do that. And if we apply regulation too quickly, it is we, we're just setting it, um, the system up for failure and we're going to repeat the same problems that we are trying to solve. Well, yeah, this paper to me was basically a nothing burger. It was actually kind of lame just to read it because it's talking about a lot of the, the points and uh, issues with DeFi that we know about. Like we know that oracles can be slow and that they can be, uh, they conclude against the system. We know that when you're liquidating in your native token, it's going to put negative price pressure on your native token. We know these things. All the builders know about these things and they have known about them for years. They've actually known about them, you know, going back to 2018 when Compound was just being built out of a San Francisco apartment. Like people People have known about these issues and now we just have a nice little report from an economist saying the facts and it's like okay great you're not really introducing anything that's going to help this i do love that they point out regulation right which is always just like the classic they see a market failure and their first thought is hey we need a regulator to step in here but they're failing to look at what the innovation here is in the first place that we have completely autonomous markets on chain you don't need anyone to interact with them. They just do their thing. If you get over leverage and the market price moves against you, you're going to get liquidated. If you're not, you can keep your loan outstanding, go use it for some other economic activity. So that's why I hate seeing these bank reports because they always just seem to call out the obvious, but they don't add any solutions and they're not interested in adding solutions. They're just interested in calling out for more regulation. And I'm not thinking that it's like nefarious in any sense of the word, like Maybe it is. They are the BIS. They have an interest in keeping banks uh, or money on banks, right? That's going to be their interest. But at the same time, I think it's more incompetence or just not having an interest in the space like other people in crypto. Adam, up to you. Yeah, I'll definitely go there. Uh, so I definitely do think that it is uh, perhaps not not you know not uh, evil, but it is malicious. Certainly, it is power recognizing threats to its power and acting accordingly. Uh, I think again the the very intentional misunderstanding to my eyes uh, of the difference between decentralized DeFi, which again are things like Maker, which have not had any problems uh, because of the way that they operate, versus sort of the facade type companies. Like if you want to make a distinction between here's the regulations for DeFi where it involves a centralized third party, and then over here's the regulations for DeFi that don't because these are effectively self-regulating you know, uh, entities, then I think that that's valid. But really, when I see a story like this, what I really read in the headline is, Cat says dogs are bad. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much like it. It's, there's no nuanced take here. This is just someone looking out for their own interest. And certainly there is a lot of threat to that interest that comes from these technologies becoming increasingly popularized and proving in many cases to be much more stable and reliable than the systems that we are supposed to trust in the real world, but which repeatedly fail us over and over again. Zach? Yeah, I mean, DeFi ain't perfect, right? I mean, it's worth remembering that DeFi is still being constructed towards something that is more widely used. Most of the biggest dApps on Ethereum 
If you're talking about daily active users, they could all fit in a football stadium, right? This is a very small slice of the world that is interacting with DeFi protocols in a meaningful way, right? But DeFi, I think the promise of DeFi remains especially compelling in this day and age in the wake of FTX and other CeFi implosions. The promise of DeFi is that there are these on-chain things that provide you bank-like functionality without having to jump through the hurdles of establishing a relationship with a bank or anyone else for that matter. And for a lot of people the world over for whom the financial system isn't working especially effectively, that's a really promising tool. And I think that I would hope that the BIS is studying this stuff in good faith to see what good stuff can be encouraged and what bad stuff can be nipped in the bud while DeFi is still in its early innings.